On today's show, we're going to take a look at the songs on the second half of my new album, Roll On Cowboys. If you missed the first half, you can check that out on episode 88 of Cowboy Crossroads. Roll On Cowboys is a double album of cowboy duets featuring Ramblin' Jack Elliott, Dom Flemons, Pip Gillette, Bryn Hill, Cor Blund, Waddy Mitchell, Michael Martin Murphy, Bridget Reedy, Randy Riemann, Tom Russell, Rod Taylor, and Andy Wilkinson. The double CD package includes a 28-page booklet with an essay by Andy Wilkinson, notes on the songs, and quotes from all the performers from Cowboy Crossroads interviews. The beautiful cover was created by legendary Western artist William Matthews, and the album is dedicated to my friend and hero, Don Edwards. The CD package is available from andyhedges.com, and you can stream the album now wherever you get your music. There will also be an album release concert in Lubbock, Texas on Tuesday, April 25th. The concert will feature most of those artists I just mentioned joining me on stage to sing all of the songs from the album. That show is nearly sold out, but there's just a handful of tickets left at cactustheater.com. Howdy folks, this is Andy Hedges, and you're listening to Cowboy Crossroads. On each episode, I interview a different guest and ask them to share stories and discuss music, poetry, and culture from the working Cowboy West and beyond. Today I've invited guest artists from my new album to come on the show and talk a little bit about the songs that we recorded. On the last episode, we looked at the first half of the album, On this episode, we'll take a look at Disc 2, and you'll hear from Rod Taylor, Dom Flemons, Pip Gillette, Cor Blund, Ramblin' Jack Elliott, Michael Martin Murphy, Tom Russell, Randy Riemann, Bryn Hill, and Andy Wilkinson. Here's Roll On Cowboys. Track 1, Here's Looking at You. Lifelong cowboy, horseman, rancher, and poet Joel Nelson wrote this song as a tribute to the working cowboy. It was first recorded by Don Edwards on his 2004 album, Last of the Troubadours. After Don retired from performing, I was honored when Joel asked me if I would start performing this song and if I would record it one day. I recorded this with New Mexico cowpuncher and singer Rod Taylor. I've known Andy probably 25 years. I appreciate that he does these old cowboy and folk songs and, you know, the traditional treatment that he gives them. I was honored that he asked me to be a part of his new project and particularly liked his choice of songs for us to do. Uh, Here's Looking at You was written by our friend Joel Nelson and uh, Don Edwards recorded it. So I was real happy to record this song with Andy. The recording was very straightforward and most enjoyable. I also liked uh, the Acuff studio and Alan Crossland. He was the engineer out there at his studio and that was, it was real easy. So uh, thanks for having me, Andy. And it was much fun. to Kansas City you wintered with Teddy Blue here's looking at you here's looking at you you 
rode with Ranger Goodnight. They helped him tame the land to learn the Yano Estacado, just like it was the back of your hand when you rode for the brand. Went three times to Sedalia with a cook and a six man crew. You came damn near Track two When I Was a Cowboy. Most folks know this song from the Lead Belly version, but Lead Belly sang some sort of nonsense lyrics that didn't seem to come from the working cowboy tradition. This version comes from Don Edwards, who put together these floating verses from various trail driving songs. I recorded this with Dom Flemons, who's been doing important work to shine a light on the history of black cowboys. Here's Dom Flemons. My first introduction to the song, When I Was a Cowboy, came from the recordings of Leadbelly, Hudy Ledbetter, the wonderful African-American songster and folk singer. And when I heard Don Edwards' version, I always loved the fact that the version that Don plays is somewhat connected to Lead Belly's song, but Don had a whole other style of playing it, which I thought was really great. A real bluesy guitar lick and and just a, a really wonderful way of handling the lyric and the melody that, again, are interwoven into the same song style that Lead Belly sings, but it's all Don Edwards' own stamp. And I think that Andy has done a wonderful job in being able to recreate that sound that uh, Don was able to create on his version of When I Was a Cowboy. And I mean, it's just really bluesy, but it's also sort of a a, a great uh, flat pick song. And when I'm playing harmonica behind uh, Andy on this one, I'm, I'm just trying to find those little pockets where uh, the guitar melody can be formed around the harmonica and vice versa and I just think it's great I think Andy's done an amazing job of continuing Don Edwards legacy now that he's not here with us we've got Andy for many more years to be able to um, play that beautiful guitar style and and to know that that unique style of uh, flat picked uh, uh, cowboy folk guitar um, has landed into the hands of someone like Andy Hedges because he's he's really done a wonderful job with it and yeah, I just just love playing the song with him too. Track 3, Punch in the Dough. I first learned this Camp Cook song from my old friend Clay Mitchell, who used to sing this around the campfire at Beaver's Crossing in Ropesville, Texas, where I got my start as a performer. I've always thought that this song would have sounded great sung by the Gillette Brothers, so I asked Pip Gillette to sing it with me on this record. Hi, this is Pip Gillette. Uh, Several months ago, I had the... uh enjoyable opportunity to record a couple of tunes with Andy Hedges up up in Mountain View, Arkansas, a little studio just outside of town. Uh, we recorded uh, Punch of the Dough 
the Henry Herbert Nibs poem that was set to music, and we loosely based it on the Jules Verne Allen version recorded back in the 30s, and it seemed very appropriate. Uh, Punch in the Dough was something my brother Guy was uh, awfully good at. We used to do a lot of chuck wagon cooking demonstrations and uh, cook-offs and things, and he was very good at sourdough biscuits, so Punch in the Dough was very familiar to me. I'll sing you a song Stand back from the wagon Stay where you belong I've heard you observing I'm fussy and slow But while you're punching cattle I'm punching the dough Now I reckon your stomach Would grow to your back if it weren't for the coke that keeps filling the slack With the beans in the box and the pork in the tub I'm a wanderer now who would fill you with grub you think you're right a handy with gun and Track 4, The Bronco And Track 5, Pitch You Wild Outlaw Pitch the Bronco was one of the recitations I included on the new album, and it was written by Captain Jack Crawford, an old-time poet, performer, army scout, and friend of Buffalo Bill Cody. It comes from his 1910 book, Where the Hand of God is Seen, and other poems. I thought the Bronco would make a nice introduction to the song, Pitch You Wild Outlaw Pitch. Pitch You Wild Outlaw Pitch is an obscure song I learned from a home recording of Texas cowboy singer and poet Buck Ramsey. Buck had in turn learned this from Montana cowboy singer Dwayne Dickinson. Like many of the old cowboy songs, it was originally written as a poem by E. A. Brennanstuhl, who published the poem in his 1914 book of verse entitled Trail Dust of a Maverick. I recorded this one with Canadian songwriter Corb Lund. Pitch, you wild outlaw pitch. I'd never even heard of that song, much less heard it played. And Andy's my go-to man for historical cowboy songs. He knows them all. So when he dug that one out of the out of the uh, basement and dusted it off, I was happy to sing on it. It reminds me a lot of those old cowboy songs that I already know. It's it's very visceral and uh, and uh, I've noticed that uh, there's not a lot of natural horsemanship going on in that song. <laughs> it was a different time, I guess. You've been roped and saddled and bridled and straddled, spurred you and quirted you too. You squealed and cavorted, you sunfished and snorted. Round the corral we both flew Your temper is sassy Your actions is classy For bucking you sure got an itch I swore I would bust you So I can trust you So pitch, you wild outlaw pitch Your eye is a fire With one bad desire Get me down there in the dirt We'll go to it, old fella There's no streaky yellow Down under my blue denim shirt Well, I've met you, I've matched you I've lurked and scratched you You can't pile me there in the ditch And you won't be the winner You buck-jumping sinner So pitch, you wild outlaw pitch Track 6, Making Merry with John Perry on the Old Bar Cross. Ramblin' Jack Elliott wrote this one for his friend John Perry Barlow's memorial service. Barlow was both a cattle rancher and a lyricist for the Grateful Dead. 
Jack read this on stage at the 2019 National Cowboy Poetry Gathering in Elko, Nevada, and I accompanied him with a guitar part inspired by Jack's composition, 912 Greens. Here's Ramblin' Jack Elliott. And about the poem, Mick and Mary, with John Perry, uh, John Perry Barlow, I wrote that poem after John Perry passed away. And my very best to you and the family, Ramblin' Jack in Kalahoochee. Making merry with John Perry on the old bar cross. A gal named Melody with Copenhagen in her lip and a blue healer named Skunk was on the bar cross riding for the brand. Barlow was boss of the bar cross. Melody was said to be the finest cowboy in Wyoming. Her uncle Red was foreman and Barlow was boss. Barlow had a horse named Captain. Captain was the boss's horse. Scramble Jack would drop in from time to time and spend a few days working on the ranch, fixing fence, stacking hay, branding calves, rounding up cattle, singing to the Barlowettes. Endless line of empty wild turkey bottles. John Byrne Cook. Track 7. Rounded Up in Glory. I recorded Rounded Up in Glory with my friend Michael Martin Murphy, playing banjo, swapping verses, and singing harmonies. In their book, Heaven on Horseback, Revivalist Songs and Verse in the Cowboy Idiom, Utah Folklorists, Austin and Alta Fife called this song a full-blown gospel hymn in the cowboy mode. Don Edwards called it a true cowboy hymn. I had the honor of singing this at Don Edwards' memorial service in Ferry, Texas on October 27, 2022. Here's Michael Martin Murphy. Rounded Up in Glory has a, a pretty sketchy history. And I won't get into the history so much as I'll try to give a little context here. Rounded Up in Glory is a revival hymn. And there was a need for songs that were gospel songs that related to the cowboys out west. This goes back pretty far. In uh, the 1830s, a preacher by the name of Z.N. Morrill who called himself an old Texan when he wrote Flowers and Fruits in the Wilderness, uh, who ended his career in 1872, just prior to when the big cattle boom started and reached its peak in the 1880s. He wanted to try to figure out how to convert people. And of course, there were a lot of people who were out on the range, even in the 1830s, 1840s, 1850s, That made them targets for the mission work of the Protestants, whose goal was the worldwide conversion of Catholics. And uh, they poured into Texas. Even by 1854, Sam Houston became a Baptist and was baptized 1854, November 19th, just west of Independence, Texas. Ceremony had to be moved to another pool because some mischievous boys had put some bushes in the water. Uh, Anyway, it shocked everybody because Houston had been a Catholic. He had been uh, an animist when he was around the Cherokees. He'd been a Presbyterian. But in 1854, when he became a Baptist, it had a lasting effect eventually on the cattle industry and the cowboys. And a lot of Baptists took advantage of the fact that he had done that because he was absolutely the most admired man in the history of Texas, and that was the beginning of the cattle trade. So to have a song that could be sung at a revival 
was a big deal. Somebody asked Houston, by the way, if all of his sins had been washed away in Rock Creek on that November day. And Sam said, if they were, I'm sorry for the fish. <laughs> anyway, as it turns out, by the 1870s, people from all over the world were investing in cattle in Texas, and uh, things were getting big. 1850s, the uh, Baptist Association that was forming said, it is our prayerful desire to see 3,600 missionary boards organized in our bounds and see flowing, therefore, from a river, streams whereof made glad the city of God, 170,000 itinerant preachers, such as Paul and Silas, going forth in the name of Israel's God. Now, again, I want to underscore itinerant preachers. These preachers weren't driving around even much on the railroad. They certainly weren't driving around in pickups or Cadillacs doing the revivals we think of today or flying. They were on horseback, horse and buggy, and they would go out to the cow camps, uh, which got started in 1866 when the Chisholm Trail opened up. And Joseph G. McCoy started talking young men into joining up with the trail herds and getting the cattle up to Abilene. So these itinerant preachers would ride out to these cowboy camps and try to have a revival and invite people from around if there were hardly any people around. Sometimes it would even be friendly Indians who would come in, and they would try to come up with a song that convinced them. So to compare becoming a Christian and eventually going to heaven to a roundup was a perfect thing. And so rounded up in glory is steeped in that history. It makes all kinds of sense. Initially, when you called me, Andy, to talk about this, I didn't give much credence to the fact that the cowboys in the West, and especially in Texas, wanted to do anything religious. But plenty of them did feel bad about some of the things they'd done and were willing to repent. So it was considered rapid progress by the Baptist Church to get so many cowboys and so many Westerners in the cattle business into it. These songs were probably sung by black cowboys, like Rounded Up in Glory. In fact, I, I hear kind of a black influence in the melody here. I also hear an Irish influence. So those are my feelings about the song, and I'm very proud to be able to sing it with you, Andy, and uh, be a part of this project. I think it's very significant that how we think of cowboys from all the westerns that we've watched is very, very different than the real story. The real way the frontier developed was a lot of times by missionaries and preachers, itinerant revivalists, and people like that who wrote these great songs. sunshine and the rain you'll be rounded up in glory by and by you'll be rounded up in glory by and by you'll be rounded up in glory by and by when the milling time is o'er you'll stampede no more when he rounds us up in glory by and by as we ride across the plain with the cowboys that have fame, storms and the lightning flash by. We shall meet to part no more upon that golden shore when he rounds us up in glory by and by. You'll be rounded up in glory by and by. Rounded up in glory by and by. When the milling time is o'er, 
you'll stampede no more when he rounds us up in glory by and by. Track 8, Old Dolores. Old Dolores was written as a poem by former assistant to the Secretary of State of the United States, James Grafton Rogers. Somewhere along the way, the poem was set to music, and Rogers' friend George A. H. Frazier wrote the lyrics for the third verse. It became a signature song for folk singer Katie Lee, who in her book of cowboy songs chronicled her journey to uncover the history behind the song and the ghost town of Dolores. I recorded this with singer and songwriter Tom Russell. Katie Lee from Jerome, Arizona, was actually the first person to record my song, Gallo del Cielo, or De Cielo as it was called back then. And uh, we became friends. She was living up in Jerome, Arizona. She's passed on now, but I heard her sing Old Dolores years and years ago. It was a song actually written by Assistant Secretary of State in the Hoover administration, James Gustin Rogers. And Katie wrapped herself around it very well. It was one of her favorite songs. Old Dolores has kind of a great vibe summoning up a abandoned mining town in New Mexico. In the country down below where the little pinions grow it's nearly always half a day to water There used to stand a town where the creek come tumbling down From the mesa where she surely had an otter Her streets were bright with candlelight And the whole town joined the chorus and every man inside let his cattle drift at night just to mosey to the town of Old Dolores Then things would kind of spin Till the sun come up again Like the back of some old yeller prairie wagon And show you dim and red Maybe half a hundred our saddle pony standing reins a dragon The red mud walls, the waterfalls The whole wide world before us But the dobe walls are gone And the goat bells in the dawn Ain't jingling in the streets of old Dolores Track 9, Passing of the Trail and Cowboy Blues. Passing of the Trail is a poem written by Charles Badger Clark. And Randy Reeman wrote the Cowboy Blues and the Wonderful Style of Jimmy Rogers about the ending of the open range era. Jimmy Rogers was not only the father of country music, the singing brakeman, and the blue yodeler, he was one of the early composers and performers of what came to be called Western music. Here's Randy Reeman. Well, I've always liked that poem, The Passing of the Trail, and and that lament of a group of people who lived in another time when it was a time of great transition. You know, that's one of the things I like about Charlie Russell's work was he, he sort of cataloged this transition time and... and um, and so that's an interesting time period to me that we went through in the U.S. and especially in the West. But as far as the song goes, I've always just been a real fan of Jimmy Rogers' music. I, I love his life story. It's a tragic story in many ways, but a story of triumph as well. And he was unafraid to use a 
melody line more than once. And in fact, he kind of had this signature melody line to all these tunes he did, you know, Waiting for a Train, uh, Hard Times in the City, all these things he called Blue Yodels. He'd just number them, you know, Blue Yodel number nine, <laughs> Blue Yodel number 11. And so I just love that stuff. It's just straightforward and it just so representative of that time period. And and so I learned a lot of Jimmy Rogers tunes. And as a working cowboy, I always rode on really big places. I had kind of unlimited riding, you know, great big ranches and um, four service leases and all that kind of stuff. And so when I got in a position in my life where I was limited in terms of the amount of room that I actually had to be horseback in, um, the thought came to me, you know, uh, I just, I got no place to ride. And that wasn't true. I, I did have a place to ride, but not like I used to. I could go out the back door and go for as long as you needed to, you know. So I was just dinking around with these signature melodies of, of Jimmy Rogers's and, um, and the licks that he would put in there, whether it was verbally or instrumentally, he had these signature things that he did. Of course, he was a great yodeler, and I don't yodel. And so I used his little turnaround that's kind of imitating his yodel in that song. The words just kind of came about being kind of blue because what you had at one season in your life is gone and, and uh, you miss it which I think is where all those poems came from, like The Passing of the Trail. There's a sadness about what's been lost. And so fooling around with those melody lines and fooling around with those signature licks, and um, uh, that's just that song just emerged uh, f from my interest in Jimmy Rogers and from a kind of a small part for me of maybe what those old timers felt like when barbed wire interrupted the open range and um, what was unlimited became limited. Cowboy blues, I've got no place to ride. I got the cowboy blues, I've got no place to ride. Everywhere I go, there's a fence on every side. You can go to Arizona, you can go to Texas too. You can go to Montana where the big sky's blue. You can go to the Dakotas and you find the same things true. At the open range ain't so open anymore. Track 10 The Old Cowman. The Old Cowman was written as a poem by Charles Badger Clark and set to music by Don Edwards. In his book, Classic Cowboy Songs, Don Edwards tells the story of how he fell asleep reciting this poem one night and woke up with the melody in his head. The song is more relevant now than when it was written over 100 years ago. I recorded this one with Utah songwriter Bren Hill. I first heard The Old Cowman off the Don Edwards Going Back to Texas record. Back in 1994, I just graduated from high school, and that record was kind of a soundtrack for a grand adventure that I signed up for hauling horses uh, up to Driggs, Idaho, and out to Wyoming for my uh, buddy's uncle. And we had lost a transmission on that trip, and we did some riding in the west slope of the Tetons. My buddy got bucked off; his horse got sprayed by a skunk. We met some locals there and had a blast with them, and. Saw a bunch of wildlife and 
I don't know, that song was just a standout to me on, on such a momentous record and, and obviously as such a fan of Don Edwards uh, from a young age, it really stuck with me. I kind of knew at the time that the West was changing and fading and that really is the overriding message of that song and I've always loved Andy's rendition of that song. It seems really conversational and um, I think when we got into the studio that was that was one of our uh, mandates was to to make it seem like it was an honest conversation between two old cowpokes that uh, were lamenting the changing West. And uh, all honors to Don Edwards and to Andy. Thanks for uh, letting me be a part of it. See lanes ran wrong And each new line would make me frown And hum this morning song Here I'm stretching of the wire The urban brand is on the land I reckon I'll retire But while progress toots her greedy horn And makes her motor buzz I thank the Lord I wasn't born no later than I was. It was good to live when all the saw without no offense nor fuss, but longed in partnership to God, nature, and to us. With skyline bounds from east to west and room to go and come, I loved my fellow man. He was scattered some Closer and closer crawls the wire While there's hardly played a back Track 11, Goodbye Old Paint John Lomax recorded a Texas panhandle fiddler and former XIT cowboy Jess Morris playing this version of Goodbye Old Paint in 1942. Jess Morris had learned the song from Charlie Willis, a black cowboy on the XIT. In his tome on old-time cowboy songs, he was singing this song. Jim Bob Tinsley wrote this about Goodbye Old Paint. Credit for saving it from obscurity must be given to three Texans, a black cowboy who sang it on trail drives, a cowboy who remembered it, and a college professor who put it down on paper. Andy Wilkinson and I learned this song from Buck Ramsey, who used to play it with Jess Morris's great nephew, Rooster Morris. On this recording, we are joined by my 11 year old daughter, Maggie Rose, on the fiddle. This is what traditional cowboy music is all about. Here's Andy Wilkinson. To my mind, Riding Old Paint is a quintessential cowboy song. It certainly comes from the folk tradition of the horseback American West. But it also comes from the tradition of black cowboys and probably before that from slaves and recently freed slaves. Clearly it has the earmarks of a cowpunch song and it is such an excellent piece that my dear friend Buck Ramsey often said that no program of cowboy music was finished until you'd sung Riding Old Paint. Ladies, and 
Leave and shine. Farewell, fair ladies. I'm leaving shine. Goodbye, my little pony. My pony won't stand. Oh, pain, oh, pain. I'm leaving shine. Goodbye. I will never prove false to the one who loves me. Oh, pain, oh, pain, I'm leaving shine. Goodbye, oh, pain, I'm leaving shine. Oh, pain, it's a good pony, and she paces as when she can. That's it for today's episode. I'd like to thank all of my guests for appearing on the podcast and for being a part of the new album. I'd like to thank Hal Cannon for playing the Cowboy Crossroads theme music. You can find out more about Hal at HalCannon.com. I'd like to thank my Trail Boss patrons, Bob Kelly, Chris Ryden, and Scott Anderson for their support of the show. If you're enjoying Cowboy Crossroads and would like to help me keep it going, you can become a patron at patreon.com slash cowboycrossroads. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash cowboycrossroads. Don't forget to go listen to the new album, and don't forget about the album release concert in Lubbock, Texas on April 25th. You can find info about the record and the concert at my website, andyhedges.com. If you'd like to contact me with a question or a comment or a story, I'd love to hear from you. Send an email to andy at andyhedges.com. Thank you for listening to Cowboy Crossroads. <laughs>